Welcome back to another edition of Plus Ultra Reviews presented by the Bros Who Think Network. My name is Lennon Burton and I'm here to talk My Hero Academia, the latest chapter, chapter 226 with you guys. But also, I'm going to talk a little bit of 225 because look, I missed a week last week, spring break. Things got chaotic over here at the BWT Network, but we're not missing anymore. Back again to talk manga. So look. Chapter 225, we see the battle has begun. It, it starts off with Reed Destro talking to uh, Jiren the Broker, and he's like, look, I know you guys don't have high-end Nomus. Well, basically, because Jiren was like, yo, you, you guys made a mistake because, one, they're not going to come save me, and, two, they have Nomus, and if they bust the Nomus out, you're in trouble. And then Reed Destro was like, I did my homework. Like, nah, y'all don't have Nomus because... The doctor can't make them as fast. If he had the body that Dobby was supposed to get, it would have been different. But since all for one's in jail, they don't have no no moves. And without that, y'all are just a bunch of hooligans. And so we see Spinner fighting. Also, as Spinner's fighting, we see that they're pretty capable fighters, the, the Liberation Army. They're not just all talk. They're, they're, they're pretty serious. So the battle begins between Ki, Kizaku and Toga. Hima, Himaka Toga. So we see the battle begins in... Toga's like doing her thing for a little bit. She's like, all right, look, I'm going I'm to kill this guy. I'm stabbing in his eye. I'm going to transform. But Kizaku's like, I just want to get an interview from her. And when Toga tries to strike her, she gets blown away with her quirk because she has the quirk of some, different than Bakugo. She can make bombs with the, just a touch of somebody. But the bombs she makes aren't as strong, but she can make high quality of them. So Toga has to back away, and then all of a sudden, when she tries to stab the uh, associates of the Liberation Army, they just, when she gets their blood, she starts to uh, blow up on the inside as well a little bit due to the quirk of Kizaku because she put bombs inside of her uh, inside of her subordinates, and she was like, "They don't mind doing that. They will give up their life for me because that's what they do." But she's not really interested, really in the whole Liberation Army, she's just interested in getting a good story because you got to remember, she's a writer, she's the head of the publication, and that's her job. She's trying to get this interview with Himika Toga, and she's like, how did you fall from so much grace? Like, you used to be a middle school student, you used to be good, you left after graduation, and now you're just this psycho killer? I don't buy that. Like, there's some story behind it. And Toga's just like, yo, I'm normal. Like, what's wrong with you? I'm normal, and then we see them face off again, and it's just like questioning each other, and that's pretty much how that chapter ends, because the battle starts, and she basically loses, she's losing the beginning chapter, the chapter 225 chapter, she's losing that one, and we see as we get into chapter 226, we see more about Toga, more about how she got to where she was, and then we see what, ha what happens in the chapter, so I don't want to spoil too much, when I, because we're gonna get into the review in a little bit, but I just want to say, chapter two twenty five did a good job of breaking away from Shigaraki and Dobby and the classic League of Villains and getting us into Toga because as much as we've seen her and we've had encounters with her, we don't know too much about her. And now we're finally learning about her, and it's super dope to see her backstory, how she became how she was, and her motivations. Because in chapter two twenty six, I think we really learn her motivations in life and what makes her tick, what makes her go, and we're going to get into that right now. So without further ado, let's get into the review of chapter 226. So this chapter begins as a look into Toga's past. We also find out that Toga's not a real name because when they say her real name in this chapter, they block it out, but it starts off at her middle school where they're like trying to figure out the girl who attacked a classmate is on the run. She's under investigation. Where did she go? And the kid she attacked, Saito, they said she was popular with the other kids. He was a pretty social kid, and they didn't understand why she'd do it. And they just saw her sucking the blood, and it was like she was in a trance making a cr crazy face. You know, just typical Toga stuff. And then it goes to her mom saying that we took f full responsibility. We will try to make up for it. It's not our fault she turned out to be this bad demon child. And they saw it from her a young age and then Kizaku's like is this your normal f face like is this your normal is it fascinating to you and this is you without a mask and she's trying to break her down she's trying to figure out what made you tick and she's trying to get inside her emotions because she's like yo there's no way you can be like this and we need to figure out who's to blame she and to Toga's pretty beat up she's laying down and Kizaku starts consoling her she starts to counsel her a little bit and she's like you pretty much drink blood to transform. You were born with that metal ability and you've always had a strong fascination with blood. But the tragedy here came from 
ordinary feeling of admiration. She just loves blood. And when they combine those two things, she, she knew society would never accept her. So that's why she made this mask for herself. Her parents kept saying, why are you doing this? Why are you making this creepy smile? It's always, why can't you just be normal? Why can't you act like a little girl? And Toga just says, shut up, tries to strike her. And then gets hit with this bomb device that this, this um, I guess this support gear that she got from Dinner Rat and to enhance her bomb quirk blast toga in the face toga's down for the count and she's like you're gonna be our more our martyr because this is proof that our cause is righteous you'll be the ideal sacrifice and basically they want to turn her into the martyr for the liberation army and to and she's like did i get any of this wrong if so just let me know otherwise the interview can't be complete and toga's like no you you got some of this wrong and she's trying to escape and she's like stupid stupid biatch i'm not miserable she's like i'm happy when i smile and just like everyone knows how to kiss people when they love it's i get satisfaction like that when i suck someone's blood so no i'm not miserable it's it's you guys that are miserable and she starts to she transforms into ochako and she's like and then kizaku's like i know you can only transform from the outside you can't do the you can't use their quirks this isn't gonna help you any bit and basically Toga's like, I only had a little bit of blood from back then. This is the girl Chaku that Deku trusts so much. He really trusts her. I want it must be nice. I want to get closer to the ones I love too. And she's like, I want to be just like you. As Kizaku's about to make the final strike, she basically does the the bomb uh, support thing again, and she hits her. And then as she hits her, she starts to float because. Toga touches her and she's able to use Ochako's quirk. She starts touching everybody around her. She's like, I'm not about to get caught. I'm not about to get caught. And then basically, everybody's floating in the air. Her The Ochako mask pops off a little bit as she's using the quirk. And she's like, Kizaku's stunned. She's like, how can you use this quirk? Because I thought it was just from the outside way. And she's like, I saw Ochako's quirk. I know how to use it. I want to be more like the people I love. And basically, as she says that, she smashes Kizaku down on the ground. Blood's everywhere. And she's like... Just like Uzaku, it's better not to kill anybody and leave him for the big lug, a.k.a. Uh, she, uh, AKA Tomura. But she's like, I had no choice because whatever we hate has to be destroyed. Right, Shigaraki? And that was just like, boom. I'm not like Deku. I, I, side with, I love him, and I love what him and Ochako have, but I still got my loyalties to Shigaraki. And she destroys that lady. She's like, I had to do it. And that's pretty much it for this chapter. Dope insights into... Uh, Toga, dope insights into her belief system and what she's getting at, but let's get into discussion. What a dope chapter. Again, we get to look at the psyche of different League of Villains members. Ever since the My Villain Academia, we got to look at Spinner. We got to look at, of course, Tomer Shigaraki. We even got a little insight, I think, into Dobby's personality. Not a look into who he is, but just a little bit of look at how he's moving, how he's shaking. But this chapter and the last chapter was Himika Toga all the way. We got to learn about our favorite League of Villains, a female, our favorite villainess, if you so to speak. But it's dope because first off, we see Toga's not even her real name, and they didn't mention it in the chapter. Hirokoshi kept that on the side, so you know the reveal's coming later down the line. Dope little play by him. I think he. Instead of doing kind of how Promised Neverland has a different demon writing, he just basically blacked it out like, nah, we're not showing y'all that right now. We'll get to it a little bit later. But we see her backstory. In middle school, she attacked a popular kid. She left after she did that. And we see as a child, she sucked blood off of birds' heads. And her family thought that that was crazy demonic. But that was her way of showing affection and showing love and she basically said when she drinks blood, that's how she feels like how other people when they kiss and when they when they have physical contact. So that's just her way of showing emotion, crazy and twisted as it may be, but it, it goes with her quirk of when she gets this blood, she can transform into that those people. And by the way, not only did she transform this chapter, but she used the quirk, but we'll get to that in a second. I thought it was interesting to see Kazaku's take from this because being the head of the publication, she was really concerned about this interview. And then when she got to the depths of what she assumed Toga was, she felt she created this mask. She was hiding. She's not really normal except when she's like this. But she doesn't realize that this is who Toga is at all times. And when she figured out what she thought was right, she was like, oh, we're going to make her a martyr for the cause. It's going to work. It's going to build our, I guess, our credibility. It's going to build our, our cause. And it's going to show more people like... People are dying and, and, and not getting the right counseling, the right sympathy, and the right usage for their quirks. 
and we can help that. But what she didn't realize is this is just Toga. And Toga straights up, she's like, I respect Ochoa because Deku trusts her. I want to be more like her. I want to have the people that I love trust me. And as she she's getting into the sense of who Ochoa is, the quirk busts out. She ends up touching uh, Kizaku and all the uh, Liberation Army supporters as well. And as she, they're all in the air after she, she pretty much got her butt whooped for, for the most part, but she maintained and as Kizaku's up in the air, she brings her down with Ochoa's move. She smashes her to the ground, bloods everywhere. She's dead. And she's like, I should have, she was like, she was thinking maybe if I'm more like Izaku, Izuku, uh, Deku, Midoriya, I, I, I shouldn't kill, but, and I should have left it up to, uh, Tomura, but we have to destroy the things we hate. She remembers back on what Shigaraki's goals are, and she realizes like I'm still with I'm still with Shigaraki. I still align with him. So when I gotta kill, I gotta kill. So I'm gonna kill the things I hate. And Kuzaku is one of the things I hate. So, boom, big chapter. As much as she loves Midori and the idea of him, she's still a villain, and she still falls in line with Shigaraki's beliefs and tom and just how the League of Villains operate. And it was dope to see. Toga go through battle, see, and it just hardened her and made her stronger, and this is gonna help the League of Villains going forward, because she took out not only a powerful member of the Liberation Army in Kizaku, she took out a bunch of subordinates as well, now she has to heal up, because like I said, she got beaten pretty badly, some bombs exploded off inside of her when she took uh, other people's blood, she got hit in the face with the bomb support thing that uh, Kizaku got from dinner at, and it, it just it messed her up, but now she handled her duties of beating one of the Liberation Army's heads, now another member of the uh, League of Villains has to fight another one, I hope it's Dobby next, fingers crossed we could see Dobby fighting the uh, leader of the red and white party, or the heart and white party, whatever it, that that party is. I hope we see Dobby getting into action next because I want to learn more about his backstory. Because you know, it's believed that he is the older brother of Todoroki, and we need to see if he's the older brother of Shoto Todoroki and end of her son. And if we can get some backstory like this with him, ooh, I would love it. But Spinner would be dope too. But I just don't know if Spinner's strong enough to take out one of the, the Liberation Army's front men. He's like, he's like, yo, I'm going to take out some of these side homies. I think this, the next one we need to see is Dobby. I think we could even see Twice Fight and maybe Mr. Compress. I think Spinner's the fourth option. And then we'll see Giganto Mashia come in and mess up some stuff when Tomer's about to go fight the leader of dinner at. But that's pretty much all I have for this chapter. Remember, if you like what you heard, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. The first 50 subscribers will be put in a merch giveaway from the Bros Who Think Network. We will get your information and we will send you a bunch of cool anime talk merch, a bunch of just stuff from our merch line that's anime expired We got or manga inspired. We have a lot of good stuff on the way. So if you are part of those first 50 subscribers, you will get some of that merch for free, courtesy of the Bros Who Think Network. Also, remember, check out Anime Talk. By the time you guys see this video, our anime podcast that is done by myself and Chris at SJE will be out. We're talking Demon Slayer. We're talking Samurai 8, uh, the, the new Samurai manga from uh, the creator of Naruto. We're talking all kind of good stuff. And just be sure to check that out wherever you get podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud, wherever you listen to podcasts, check that out. But until next time, we will be seeing you shortly. And remember, keep it plus ultra, but I will be back for chapter 227. No more missing because we got to give you guys this great content. But thank you. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video. And until next time, be easy. Peace.